Hi, this is Sean. In this video, I'm going to go over how to make a missile battery that shoots out a bunch of missiles that are affected by their uh, their aim velocity. And also, um, my main goal is also to go over how to make particle systems emit a secondary particle system, and also how to hook up the uh, the particle volume shader to the cloud particle. So let's go over that. And we can see this is the final, the final output. We've got um, a volume emitter that's kicking out a bunch of particles from a rocket battery. And the goal is that we've got um, instanced missile particle. And each instanced missile particle kicks out a secondary particle system. As the secondary particle system is emitted, it is fiery red glowing and then that glow dissipates in addition to the glow transforming it transforms in color to gray and also the opacity gets greater over the time as the particle ages and finally as the particle smoke emits it grows as it dissipates so Let's um, just start from the beginning here. So let's made a quick missile. And the rule of thumb for setting up the, the instance particle is that you need to have it facing in the plus x direction and have it on the origin. So um, in addition to having it on the origin, you should place it so that I'm placing it so that um, when it generates a secondary emitter, the secondary emitter will emit again from that origin point. So I'm also going to, just so that Maya doesn't get confused, I'm going to freeze transformations that zeroes everything out. I'm going to create um, some dynamics. So we're already in the dynamics section. I'm going to create emitter. And that emitter, <clears throat> the one I used in the, uh, the finished version was a volume emitter. And by default, the volume emitter emits from the center point. So um, if you scroll down to volume speed attributes, um, by default, it emits from that center point because it's set to away from center, which is one. Um, but if we emit particles like along an axis, starts kicking out the particles along the axis and and that's a good start so and then we can also apply some uh, a field a gravity field to it so that as the particles get away they start to get pulled down I'm gonna make those a little bit easier to see just for a second here um, turn those into just spheres okay and we'll give ourselves a little bit more time. So looks like we need a little bit more speed. So maybe 30 or 40. Um, and you can sort of, you can create a combination of uh, directional speed and axial, axial speed. But for this example, I'm just gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it simple. It looks like 45 is a little bit too strong. So we'll just pick something in the in the middle. Twenty-five. All right, good enough for this example. So now we select our particle, our our instance object, and then we can go say particle instancer. So now we've got that object being instanced. Okay. Uh, so um, the next step is to instance, create another particle system on, on this particle. So select the particle system and go under particles emit from object. So now you can see we've got a secondary particle system emitting from each object. So maybe what will make it easier to see is if we emit less missiles, I think. So let's go to the emitter node and the emission rate 
set that to like two. It's still emitting too many. So in fact, I set the secondary particle system to two. Really, we can keep that a little bit higher. And in fact, it's probably a good idea to start naming these two. So we'll call this smoke, and this will be the missile. There we go. So that's looking good. And in fact, I want the smoke, we'll start dialing up some of the parameters for the smoke. I don't want the smoke to live forever. We can make it. Um, maybe just a lifespan of, of uh, 1 or even 1 1.5 and let's see what else yeah I think 1 would, would be fine okay so the next thing is, well, we want to make them um, clouds. And we want the clouds to change in opacity over time. So I'm going to add a per, per particle opacity attribute. And I'm also going to add a, a color, per particle color attribute, so that they can start glowing red and then transform over time. And we also want a, a per particle radius attribute. So I'm going to add that, radius PP. And to all of those, we're going to add ramps. So let's start with the opacity. That's the easiest. Create a ramp for that. Edit the ramp. And let's just take a look at the, the particles. So the, you want to make sure as you start out that the ramp is going in the correct direction. So I'm going to just reduce the particle emission rate further, just so it's a little easier to see. But it looks like it is. It looks like it's getting. Um, and also for this example, maybe let's just make the particle lifespan of the secondary particle even less. There we go. So. Um, so that's going in the right direction. If it was going in the wrong direction, we would go in and edit the uh, the ramp. But that looks fine to me. So it's, uh, it starts opaque, and then it goes transparent. Great. So let's go into the RGB and create a ramp. And so for the RGB attributes, we do want it to start red, or at least orangish. I'm going to nudge that over. And we could even say the secondary attribute is fine. But then after that, pretty much we want it to get gray. Great. OK, next thing is we want the radius to get larger over time. And so here we can see the ramp is going in the wrong direction. So let's reverse that. So we don't want it to start at zero. We do want it to start at something. But And you can actually overdrive attributes. In the previous example, I overdrove to like almost 15. Let's try, since I think we're working at a slightly different scale, let's try 10. Yeah, see, that looks too big to me. Probably something like 3 would just be fine for this attribute. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so we've got that set up. And now we need to hook up the, the uh, the particle cloud. And I think this is a good time to stop and I'll just do this in two videos. So thanks for watching and um, check out Particle Missiles Part 2 in a second.